He started with just two, two teams, prepare for next year, next season. To foster young talent and nurture, obviously, any talent. Hey there, Cricket Lovers. Welcome back to The Reverse Scoop. As always, I'm Nabil Khan, and today we, we are going over youth and future of U.S. cricket and youth development here in the U.S. And I have a very special guest with me joining today, Mr. Ajit Bhaskar. He's the president of one of the largest cricket leagues here in the U.S., Commonwealth Cricket Leagues. And I'm honored to be inviting him right now to have this conversation about U.S. cricket. He's been very involved on the scene. So we're going to get his personal take on the state of U.S. cricket and the strategies needed to grow the game further. So we're going to welcome him on. Ajit, thank you for joining me on the podcast, brother. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? And I'm doing great. And uh, thanks for the invite. And you're doing a wonderful job with this podcast, man. I think uh, this region needs all the help we can get and i think you're in the right direction to help all of us awesome man thank you thank you uh you know let's first uh, ajit bhai talk about a little bit of your background with the commonwealth cricket league and give people a little bit of intro on the commonwealth league how large it is just to give people a little bit of a background of of what you have to manage from a league perspective and from numbers perspective so um, as you said it's the largest league one of the largest league in the country and uh, largest league in the in this region you probably heard about commonwealth it's like 45 years running now it was uh, started by leslie low long time back seven, 1979 time but 1973 1974 that's when the whole uh, inception of this league started where he wanted to promote the cricket uh, i think he started with just two, two teams and um, it, it was not about the league or anything he he just wanted to promote the cricket in that region so and then that's how it started from two to four four to eight and now like we are almost hitting in 100 uh, 100 clubs in the league wow man and, 100 uh, clubs. That's... To, yeah. yeah yeah on a day to day if you ask it's it's a nightmare as you know logistics uh, infrastructure player rules it's a hell of a lot of headache uh, in the season time but uh, this is the time where we relax actually cricket is done take some breath prepare for next year, next season. That's all it's going on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's some evolution, Ajit, right? From like two teams in 1973, 1974 to getting league status, I think in 1979, and then going on to grow close to 100 teams or over 100 teams. It's some accomplishments. So what kind of strategies did it take over the long period of time to to see this type of growth and then obviously sustain it over the long period of time as well? Because you guys have been very successful you know, at your league tournaments. And so what's the, what's the pathway for like other leagues to, to see similar success and growth? Yeah, I think New York used to be the mecca of cricket for a long time, right? That has yeah. been shifting now. Like, you know, as you are aware, I was in the board of directors, served USA Cricket for four years as a board of director, where I've seen cricket across the region. So uh, New York used to be the mecca of the cricket and that, that I think for a long time, people, people, there were more people here who wanted to play cricket. And uh, that helped to have more clubs. I think in this region, like a lot of quality leagues were there. And quite a lot of teams were completely ignored or took off because they were not qualified. Like I think at that point of time, you need to have a ground and you need to have a good financial backup or good players to play in any league. Leslie Lowe at that time broke that chain. And I think he said, let's promote the cricket with amateur cricketers or the hobbyists, not the professionals. So let's give an opportunity to everybody to play. That's how it started. And he started adding people and you never knew, like a lot of people wanted to play cricket. So everybody joined and then they felt this is the easy league to work with. It's, it's there like uh, we can play cricket rather than uh, having uh, more difficulties to get the grounds or any other hurdles they have to play cricket. So that is the one thing he made it very easy for normal, common people to play cricket. And the people who know cricket, who play cricket back in the country, they are able to play uh, cricket here very easily. And that's how it flourished from uh, two teams to like 80, 90 teams easily. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I totally concur there because I'm going to give a, a little bit of my example. When I initially moved here to the U.S., 
from Pakistan. I moved here from New York, uh, from Karachi to New York. And we used to live in Yonkers, right? And literally like three blocks down after Yonkers, Bronx starts and you see, you know, Van Cortland Park and a bunch of cricket going on there. So me as like a 10 year old, 11 year old growing here, that was like my first taste of cricket after playing underage cricket back in Pakistan. So, you know, I knew like even here when I moved here, like I, I didn't, I had no idea I would see cricket here, but again, seeing it through the eyes of, you know, everyday people just trying to play, you know, at, at the VCP park was just awesome. And it again, sparked my interest back into it. So just that quick story, you know, of, of what the league has done for a little guy like me as well, from when I moved here and I was just a kid. But it kept it in my mind that, hey, cricket's still here and, and still growing. So I'm sure there's a lot of stories like that, you know, that, that the league has been able to achieve with youngsters and stuff like that. So in, in talking about that, right, I want to talk to a little bit about youth development, Ajit Bhai. Is there any plans with league or like in currently in place that you guys kind of go through to, to foster young talent and nurture, obviously, any talent that catches, you know, the league's eye or particular team's eyes that you guys an eye out and say, hey, I think this is probably a talent that can play at the next level. And, you know, is there any any type of a structure in place that can provide them some type of structured way to get to that next level? So over the years, right, like you know, cricket has evolved and it has seen different cycles. So there were peak time when cricket was uh, well respected and uh, uh, it was uh, recognized, I would say. So in 45 years of Commonwealth, uh, it, it has seen ups and downs and same thing with cricket in USA has seen ups and downs right so if you see the cricket in uh, USA board has like 50 years of history out of that 30 years were very good so team from here used to go and play under 19 under 16 and different regions to compete a lot of structure was there at the time commonwealth used to take teams there and play so last 10 15 years things have fallen apart we still have not like i think the new board is putting some structure that's good they're having tournaments it has not yet hit the local uh, region yet so we do have something with the PSAL public school athletic league so they do a 28 uh, teams competition and in commonwealth especially we do have six to eight teams who are like under 19 so uh, we do give a good discount for them to uh, play with the league next year we are planning to have a separate division for you completely so still we are planning is it uh, saturday morning or sunday morning some uh, time we have to put just specially for youth so that uh, uh, we can give an opportunity for them in the same platform so that they can nourish their talent right now a lot of kids are playing with adults it's, it's good for them they are getting a good exposure but at the same time may not be good for their level right like they, they are not physically strong as a as an adult but when we cry when we create a division for them they will be playing in the same ground means same uh, level at other other youth that will really boost their uh, confidence and probably their skills so that's the commonwealth plan for next year so that uh, we can really promote you that's re that's really amazing to hear because and, and it's uh you know super cool because i think the league that i play in southern connecticut again the president here jay singh put put out this youth program where there's now four youth teams within their division that play amongst each other and that started from again the ernie milford cricket club going to the city and starting a youth rec program for the summer. And once we were able to kind of get that summer program off with working with the city, we actually ended up getting some backing from the city and we got into the offices and got into the talks with mayor. And, you know, since then, the, the model that we've been able to apply here, it's a nonprofit model. We don't charge people for the coaching or whatever that comes in for the youth development. And people obviously bring in their families and kids and they donate to the club. So we can sustain the cost of our indoors and our facilities and things like that. So, and then the city has backed us and that all happened from just us doing a youth rec program aligning with the city. We told them to essentially do the, put it out on their website, put it on their newspapers, and we will come and deliver essentially the entire camp. They charge probably 50, 55 bucks, 70 bucks per, per registration. 
But once they were able to get through that process, right? Five years down the line, we went from five kids to 50 kids. And now we get almost 100 kids every summer just for that youth summer rec program. So that's how we were able to get into like the offices of our town hall. So any plan there, Ajit Bhai, into getting actually into the offices and getting our voices heard from like the league's perspective? I think that's a wonderful initiative. Uh, so we did a couple of school uh, uh, trainings and uh, local community training uh, from last few years. Every year I do the same thing in summer. It's basically I call a coach and give some kids an opportunity to learn cricket and play. It's been like from last three years I'm doing that. So um, good that like you brought it up. A lot of programs are there where uh, they would like to support and recognize the youth uh, programs. So Commonwealth is planning to put that also next year to go with NYPD, who is a great support for youth. Same thing with City. And uh, now, uh, see, that this World Cup is going to bring a lot of uh, youth into the game, I would say because uh, it's happening in our backyard. It's in Eisenhower, which is happening. So I'm pretty sure there will be a huge buzz and a lot of kids would like to pick this as a sport, at least to try out once. And probably we should all capitalize on that in all the region to see like uh, how we can promote this uh, game. Coming back to the Commonwealth again, I think it's a wonderful concept of summer where they have a break, use that uh, eight weeks or 10 weeks, uh, form a tournament for them and uh, yeah, including coaching, treat, uh, train them and then have one small tournament so that uh, they can display their what they learned in that summer season. That's awesome, man. That's, that's so glad to hear again. I mean, you know, youth development and grassroots cricket is, I think, the the future for us because any if I want to see any growth locally in the game, I mean, these programs, I feel like, have to be, to every club should be doing at least some some youth cricket development work to, to help to the cause. And that's really the idea of this podcast as well, is to obviously spotlight a little bit into the work that's needed on the youth development, the volunteers that are needed for the USA Cricket uh, de- Youth Development Program, which again, New Milford is, is partnering with to kind of align those things. So a lot of help is needed right across the board. So again, people, if they can help out, feel free to you know be part of any type of youth programs out there that, that that are supporting this type of growth. So now like what's what's the expansion further from here Ajit Bay? I mean, you've already hit 100 teams, right? So what's the future plan for like next couple of years or next 2 3 years down the line? Are we seeing more teams come on or is it like you're just trying to sustain what you have now? New York, especially New York has a rich history of cricket and uh, there are six, seven leagues which has like uh, more than 50 years of history. Uh, Metropolitan, American Cricket League, New York, Eastern American, all these have like more than 40, 50 years of history. So I took over from Leslie last four years, like 22, sorry, 2020 I took over because of his health, I had to step in and take it. So from there, I had a big question. I was always talking to Leslie on this, like how do we improve the cricket in New York, right? So it took a lot of time like in first two years were just cleaning up the league it's a bit so mammoth has grounds all over infrastructure is a major problem in new york um just one or two grounds are really top class and rest all is is not that great like you can still play cricket but not to the extent where you can say it is a good cricket so that's real challenge and the problem is like uh, you don't have a land and the park department will never allow you to work on it they will not allow you to cut the grass, not allow you to fix yes. the pitch because of the liability issues and a lot of other stuff. So they don't allow you to do anything. And at the same time, they don't even understand the sport, like how it is uh, played. If the grass is high, the ball will not travel. They have to cut the grass. But again, they have their own limitation. They don't have resources. So and uh, where like we, and they will not allow you to keep this instrument like uh, the lawnmowers or equipment there. So a lot of challenge. First year, two year was just because of COVID. Uh, whole year there was no work on the grounds. It was in very bad shape. You need a lot of stuff. You need mats. You need the clay. Clay was a real shortage. One year we just cleaning up the it's a, uh, organization itself took a time. And next two years we fixed uh, the grounds. And then uh, as a league, the challenges are teams infrastructure and your officials, right? So these are the three bigger uh, wings. Uh, Official will come in management. 
So to run it successfully, you need to have a proper infrastructure. And then you need to have a proper organizing means structure with rules and officials following that. So, um, and then comes all the clubs like who have to execute or follow those rules. And you need to make sure like the rules are properly executed or followed. That's the real challenge in a club cricket and local one. Like professionals know what to do and how to do. But when you're talking and dealing with uh, amateurs who are go a game is hobbyist, they just play this as a hobby on a weekend. And that is where like we have four divisions, right? Like one, which is a premier division where uh, international players play. So division B, C, D, where you play with local cricket. So you'll have a lot of challenges and um, that's how like you need to manage that on a week to week basis. Like how do you do that? So, so far we have cleaned up all the stuff. Infrastructure is to an extent we fixed, but there are real challenges are there. And I hope the World Cup will educate all the parks department saying that this is one of the largest game and the, the scale, if they see it, they will recognize this is one of the like good sport followed by the world. As soon as they know, then we can talk to them and say, yes, that was the World Cup you saw. That is the game we play and give us uh, a good facility. Right now, see, not all the grounds are turf. And I don't think you can't have a natural turf, at least artificial turf. You need to put a mat, concrete, so that people don't have to lift this heavy mat to play the game. It's, it's a big challenge, right? So in yeah. past, I remember in Bronx, <laughs> we have to carry our mat, put the mat, take the mat and come out. So that was a nightmare, right? Like anybody who wants to play cricket, they have to do all this stuff. Can take the mat, put it in your trunk or in the SUV, take that all the way, put play and come. And I think at that time, um, it was all okay for all of us because we're crazy people to do that. Now, if you ask teams to do it, they would rather stay home rather than picking a mat and do it. There are still people who will do it, but you will not expect 100 clubs to do it. So that's a big challenge for us to how do we manage. So, but if I see other part of the country, right, like Dallas, probably California, in fact, LA, some of the, especially Dallas, I saw like five awesome grounds. The grass was nicely cut and the turf, uh, the mat is uh, concrete on that. They put a nice uh, a mat. So I was like confused. Like in the same country, people are doing this. The car, park is taking care of it all. North Carolina, like they do, they do the same thing. Atlanta, they do the same thing. New York is the only place. I think there are a few other places where they don't follow. But uh, what I would say is that is something that has to improve or change. Park facility has yeah. to improve so that uh, all our guys get a good opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that ha that has a lot to do with the investment within the region? Or is it like maybe a missing piece that, you know, we're, we're not using, maybe using the city somehow? Because I've been to Dallas and, uh, you know, been to Texas and California, amazing fields out there. And it seems like their cities are more involved within their structuring process, right? And in New York, we don't see that here. And again, in Connecticut here, we we were able to get into the city with that youth development program. And after that, the city started to actually bring more support into, into the club. So do you think there is, again, a missing link there by us not approaching the offices in the, in the right way? Or maybe there's not enough investment in the area. And in those areas, maybe a lot more cricket enthusiasts are putting in more money. Or the other leagues that are coming in, minor league, major league. A lot of leagues that are, um, you know, bringing in a lot of a lot of dollars to invest in in this U.S. market. Now, see, like uh, every region has money, right? They're still maintaining yeah. the park. Uh, if you see yeah. soccer or for baseball, they prepare the ground nicely for every week, just for the cricket, because they have not heard about it, they have not played about it, like they have never played, and uh, they don't see something happening in this country, like. Uh, it's good like last year major league happened so things would really change the world cup would really change i am like yeah. looking forward to uh, involve all this park department for just an educational purpose what is this game how it is played how it is maintained if that is one thing second thing we want to do is a partnership with them they, if they can't do it the leagues can manage it uh, allow us to do it 
so that we because and especially last year i did it myself many pictures we fixed it irrespective like uh, many cost more money because they need to get a as uh, a uh, what is that license contractor to enter the park to fix, uh, fix anything i can't just take a couple of guys from the street to roll it i yeah, need yeah. to pay a license yeah. contractor to enter the park to fix the pitch they will check their license the insurance and so many that guy would charge you more uh, to fix yeah. anything right so uh, it, it was a little expensive but we still managed it so that uh, we need to have some good uh, grounds to do it but uh, again coming back if the world cup can open their eyes then probably yeah. then all of us should go and reach out to this uh, officials and explain what is that we need and hopefully they fix all those grounds for us and that's very important if you don't have a proper infrastructure you will never take your game up that very clear yeah. i tell you because here there is no career for the youth like it's not an nfl it's not baseball or basketball right it yeah. would be something a time pass for them so and if the infrastructure is also bad then nobody will pursue it and say okay time pass i did it and then right but uh, yeah. hopefully world cup major league and usa cricket and coming up might people like think because there is money if you see ipl there is money yeah. money is not the question. A lot of money. good players a lot of money so and uh, a lot of things are happening i hope this will be a career path and few people picks it up and shows them as a hero here so other people can follow absolutely and you know you brought up major league and such crazy opportunities for the youngsters here if they really want to focus on it there's a lot of opportunities coming here right to leagues and and other forms of cricket so how how does one again locally get recognized and gets into one of those teams that you'd be i know like Major League came in, we saw a lot of overseas stars come in, and maybe a handful of U.S. players got got a look into the minor league into the, into the major league setups, right? So, how does like even U.S. players that are playing right now, how do they get themselves involved with this process of actually getting into these leagues and 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 showing up as local talent instead of bringing on a lot of the overseas? I know we need overseas talent, right? But we also need some local players involved into each team. So is there maybe a way to get them involved in the setup? Yeah, like I think, uh, see, when we were there, the minor league was created for that, to promote the local cricket, right? So minor league had a clause where two to three youth player has to play, under 19, uh, two under 19 player, I think under 21 they made it. So two uh, youth player has to be participating in a team and playing 11 actually for that matter. So that's a good clause, like where you you are, they enforce it, saying that you need to have a couple of youth players playing in a playing level. It's it's huge, right? So uh, coming back, how you participate, right? Like uh, for for example, minor league, they 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 did trials uh, in New York a few years back. I was also part of it to see the youth talent. So uh, they they announce and they publish all this stuff, saying that uh, there will be a trial. If you're interested, come and join. We will we will take a look. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, we will just go participate in the trials, show that you're good, and then probably, and then um, uh, the, that's on the minor league. But USA Cricket also has the same thing. Like they call for trials, and they would be the youth volunteers on the local level. Uh, find out who is that guy, and then reach out to them. Like constantly talk to them and say what is that they have to do. But uh, it's 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 in the stepping stone it has not reached where it is matured enough to pick the right uh, candidate very talented people right right now it's it, it is very thin like to get into that you need to be self motivated or you need to look for the information rather than they look for you that that's that has not reached right where you have enough resource resources and volunteers then and uh, you you have financially backup then people will start looking where do i find the right talent for this region it is not at reach that it is very entry level where they just have to conduct and give an opportunity for the youth so the youth has to look for that uh, look from us cricket post media releases news and then same thing uh, with minor league register yourself for major league cricket they they uh, publish trials and they will say who the owners are so uh, uh, yeah, like I think it will change over the time. 
where the talent then they will start looking for the talent right i, I still remember like um, when they made it two people mandated to play playing 11th and team owners were looking who are the talented kids where they can participate in the team right so you need to you need to be part of the league um for example uh, here in new york there was one kid uh, i don't want to take name but he was uh, looked upon by three to four uh, teams in minor league and uh, yeah like one guy probably paid him to play there so that was good and he played he played really good he he was one of the amazing kids so if you have talent and um, yeah like you you have to be proactively reaching out rather than other people or participate in the league and uh, word of mouth will always be there they will talk this kid is good yeah. and uh, pick up so it's very thin now it's going to grow bigger but there are, there is a channel look forward for the information and be proactive that's all i can say thank you for that information and you earlier brought up and uh, you know nfl mlb and you know basketball and those types of sports and they have a farm system in place right in those sports where the top level athletes come through a farm system and we have those systems already kind of built out here do you think like i mean once they're educated enough you know relevant people within their cities about cricket let's say after the world cup do you see foresee any any type of work being done to kind of build out a cricketing farm system for the future similar to baseball or or basketball or nfl yeah like i think that's where even those people also look for the minor league leagues minor league is for that where they look for the local players and uh, work see uh, nfl or uh, baseball and all there are grassroots that is means in the schools the school promotes that to start with the, the people are educated in, from that level and then they have a proper uh, uh, career to pick like if they want to play baseball then they can join uh, local club minor league major league and like that so right now like we are not at penetrated at grass like uh, we are not in in the schools yet so once we get into that but again see all these programs are backed up by national board right national body they give good money for schools um uh to promote this and they yeah they shell a lot of money for uh, with the gears um like training people the coaches a lot of stuff that happens so not like it's not like any sports will not just grow by um anybody's interest right like it has to be initially somebody has to gain something out of it if the coaches are not interested to train this you will not get many good kids to play cricket same thing school if school doesn't promote this if there are no lobbyists to pro- put this in school uh, it will never get into school so somebody has to work hard probably um, i tried a lot of times to get into the school and uh, uh, yeah i think if we all like see as a community if all come together and go talk to any board of education or city or any county they have to listen and they will listen right now in new york the problem is nobody has free time nobody will step up and go go and you know what let me talk on behalf of it because it's it is going to take time it's not easy and uh, you it's not one meeting you have to follow up with data but uh, because all these big people are ready to do it but you have to tell them what to do and how to do it that means you need to have a proper proposal with proper data uh, to support all those stuff and a uh, plan how you execute that you need to have all this go give that and then attend few meetings then ball will start rolling so you so it's it's multi factor stuff where you need to get time and people together yeah, so i absolutely i mean you said you got to get people together so unity obviously amongst the community of cricket here in the US is is up most of importance right because if we can come together as a community and really stamp our, our authority and say hey this is what we really want to accomplish they would have to listen to us right so how do we approach that though ajit bhai how do we get everybody together now because obviously it's it's one of the solutions that we're talking about right to to get the game into schools and and the grassroots is the unity of the cricket community so what are some strategies that we can use maybe have a 
a petition that we can send around? I know that's happened probably in the past. Or or what other approaches can we take to get the guys together? Or like what causes can we obviously promote that will obviously get people involved into into this as well? I can just take some example from other region, right? North Carolina got an, a mini stadium that was completely funded by a uh, local city. Morrisville City is the one which completely funded, sponsored that uh, the stadium. It's a mini stadium like you have a proper turf with 360 degree with ropes and restroom, a, a club That's area, awesome. a lot of stuff. For, uh, so what they did is they constantly went to the town hall meeting with quite a lot of people just going there and sitting and saying, we need cricket ground, we need cricket ground. So they ignored them for two years, but numbers were more. So third year, fourth year, they had to listen. Fifth year, they approved. And then three years, it took to develop. So it's, a, as I said, multi-year project. So you need to show your strength and uh, numbers are more important because as soon as you go to town hall with a huge number, they have to listen to you. And they have to budget it sometimes, or they have to give a reason why not. Most of the first, first few times they will ignore to just see whether you are serious or not. Yeah. If you are serious enough, then uh, they will. They have to work, and they will, uh, they will, they will sanction or they will approve the plan. So easy, if at all. We see New York. The problem is everybody is busy, very busy, and they are into multiple things. So. Even if I organize something like getting this 50 people somewhere is a little difficult and challenging. So uh, that's what we did, right? Like I did two petitions, one for Empire State uh, Cricket One. We got almost 1,000 people signed uh, petition. Second was this World Cup, getting the World Cup in New York. Yeah, we did a petition because Bronx completely opposed it. And uh, I raised yeah. another petition saying that we have to get cricket here. They, wa they wanted to use Van Cortlandt Park, right, as the as the location for the field. So I, I was a little bit aware of that. So, yeah, now it's in Long Island, if I'm not mistaken, correct, yeah. Ajit Bay? Correct, correct, correct. So initially yeah, yeah. I was working for Bronx. So Bronx people, yeah, I'm, I was so scared that we will lose this opportunity. Uh, people don't realize like what a mammoth uh, opportunity is this. Uh, yeah. yeah, like I, I, they, people have to sacrifice. Uh, like out of uh, four grounds, two grounds were I was losing a couple of grounds in Bronx also. But I was ready. I said fine. I could stop one one division or one uh, whatever it takes to get this because see one year would would change a lot of things here in New York. The park department will see what this event is. The youth who are going to see all the stars and the, all this excitement and all the energy, they will see like what what big thing is it. And then some people would pick it. In New York, we need great coaches. We need great umpires, means uh, uh, officials, and we need a great uh, facility for, to grow. Or else, this will be a stagnant and it will not flourish. So uh, in next few years what i what i envision for commonwealth and the uh, cricket in uh, new york is to get few good facilities to start with and then start a really good youth program so that uh, people can young people can uh, pick this up and then penetrate that to the school cricket uh, so that uh, school can also recognize this that's how we can we can flourish this sports or else you will yeah this whole infrastructure will not get any better and quality of cricket will not improve and i was telling few people also saying that what happens is nation is in different level california texas and other regions are in different level because the, the players will play in turf pitches you want to play in mad are better, you, yeah. cannot, you cannot compete with them you cannot compete and uh, what happens is you will lose all your talented people like new york used to be the mecca of cricket once upon a time, I think eight or nine players used to represent the country from New York. It used to be like that. So now, like hardly one, 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 Gajanan Singh or uh, Jesse are from this region. That's all. Not Jesse anybody. Singh is New so, Jersey, yeah. yeah Jesse is so from New Jersey, right? Fun. Yeah. Yeah. So like a couple of guys, that's it. Like not many more. So you will yeah. lose the quality and then probably, yeah, things will go in the south. 
if you don't take action now. Absolutely. I think Steve Messiah used to play, right, in Commonwealth? Back in the day, there's, said there's some yeah. triumph stories about Steve Messiah. You want to talk to the viewers about that, Ajit Bhai? Steve Messiah used to be the USA cricket uh, captain uh, yeah. and one of his finest gentlemen. Um, he he played a few games in Commonwealth, but he he plays for Metropolitan League. Um, oh, yeah, as I said, very talented. He used to be the region selector, and I think he's still a region, uh, regional selector for USA cricket. Uh, so yeah, like I think uh, uh, Alex Amsterdam was on another guy who used to play from this region. Quite, uh, quite a lot of people uh, I could name uh, who represented USA from here. Uh, that those were the golden days. That's gone. Yeah. So uh, because we used to have uh, one turf, one of a uh, couple of turf pitches in New York, and uh, except Los Angeles, I think nowhere else we had turf pitches. So. It, it used to be one of the like um, great days for cricket at the time. Now, in, um, I'm, I'm very positive. If we don't work on infrastructure, cricket will not go anywhere. It will be here and maybe going south. I agree, man. And I have to invite you guys out to the New Milford Cricket Club. We put our first turf wicket there last year, and it, it came out wonderfully well. Uh, at the end of last season, we ended up dropping grass on it. So at the early next season, we're going to trim the grass. And by April, it should be ready to to play on it again. So if you want to bring a team out here, Ajit Bay, starting next year to play a game or two, you know, more than welcome. We would love to have you guys come on. It's probably about 50 minutes, 55 minutes out of New York. So it's not too far for you guys. That could be awesome. And I think I would look forward to play uh, there. Similarly, I think Ashok Adipapala, uh, from Alban, he yeah. he took the challenge on himself. Yeah. He did a private uh, ground. It's very expensive to maintain by themselves. So, but uh, similarly, something we have to do it here so that uh, like to just promote the cricket, right? So, uh, sure. Thanks for the invitation, and I'm looking for. We'll look forward to play there. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So to finish off the conversation, Ajit Bhai, let's. Just got a couple more questions for you. Any future advice for younger cricketers, aspiring cricketers looking to play and, and improve their game within uh, Metropolitan uh, Commonwealth League or within that region, Metropolitan region? What advice would you have to them and anything that you want to say to them? See, uh, uh, there are quite a lot of talented kids out there. So be realistic, right? Like know your weaknesses, work on that. And uh, the way we used to work, oh man, like uh, my time uh, for coaching means uh, uh, five days a week, literally after the school, uh, you have to go cycling or uh, walking to the ground, like uh, another 20, 30 minutes go there. And then coaches were way too strict at the time. So you had to run around the ground and then put you on the mat, the nets, and then listen very, very carefully what coach says or else, uh, it, 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 yeah, it was tough. Or else he'll make us run one more to, to one or two rounds extra. So yeah. uh, we learned it a very hard way. And I, I'm very glad that the way I learned it, I'm very disciplined, very disciplined on that way. So uh, we, we play good cricket because of that. So pick a good coach, listen to them and uh, improve your skills, work on your weaknesses be realistic right like what is uh, what you can do and what you can't and then play some good cricket uh, uh, be part of some league because that's where you go to see real challenges uh, and then yeah if you're good enough move uh, ahead with the divisions play in a, a premier division one or two games you will know really good games so if i say from uh, division uh, 4 to division 1 the game is totally different so uh, yeah like uh, yeah, like you will you will see that competition, you will see that energy, and you need to be on top. So, and uh, again, so there is a good uh, future for cricket because major league is coming, and uh, many other big, big big tournaments are happening. Like two hundred fifty thousand cash prize, a lot of the money is there. So, uh, so pick this as a career sports for future, and uh, don't leave this. This is. And again, this is played by a lot of immigrants. Uh, this game is survived only because of immigrants. And I would say like this has to be a mainstream sports here, not just immigrants and other, other kids too. 
So once that happens, probably this this will go in different level. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Ajit. But as you heard from him, guys, you know, we got to get the game to go mainstream. And to do that, we got to focus on our youth development of cricket, grassroots cricket, and continue to work tirelessly to, to grow the game that we all love so much. Again, Ajit Bai, thank you so much for joining me. It was a wonderful conversation. And again, guys, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon for more updates. We're going to be bringing on more guests in the future talking about youth development and future of U.S. cricket here. Again, Ajit Bai, thank you so much for joining me from here on the Reverse Scoop channel. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you and looking forward to do it again sometime. Thank you so much again. Thanks. Thanks, Naveen, for the opportunity. Before I wrap up, I think one point I would like to touch is reach out to your school, uh, local school, wherever you live. Uh, and they are supposed to give you the ground to play cricket. So if yeah. so, that's an important point. So if you have a club and you're looking to play somewhere uh, sports and you don't have a park or uh, like any place to play, your school grounds are supposed to facilitate that and help you to play that. So reach out to your uh, athletic director and say, we have a youth here or uh, adults who would like to play and they have to help you. So just give a call or reach out to them. And uh, that's how you can make more grounds and probably add more people to play. And thanks, Nabil, so, once thank again so for a wonderful that. job you're doing. Yeah, a wonderful job you're doing. Continue and probably share this good, uh, I, I think the other thing we were discussing, right? Um, let's let's have a brainstorm session where whatever you have learned or the region, whoever has good, let's come together and say like how we can help uh, with our lesson learned, what worked for you, what didn't work, and how we can help each other. That would be something. Absolutely. Something. Or maybe monthly let's have a brainstorm session with all the leaders who who are there to do something good and because that's important for all of us because we are in minority, so it's important for us to pick something good and share it with all of us so okay. i think that's a wonderful idea because obviously i'm talking with a lot of cricketing leaders and if we can get them even for a town hall once a month inside a room inside a virtual room where we can have oh, a sure. have a conversation yeah. about the game you know and talk about challenges and solutions and and what's working for each other you know maybe one thing that's working for us that can help other clubs out so that's that's the absolute way to grow the game and unite the community. So absolutely something that I will definitely look to get together for once we compile a lot of the interviews from the from the leaders. Then I think it'll be something great to have everybody on to on to a room and, and, and have that conversation. Thanks for that amazing idea, Jeet Bay. Again, thank you for for joining me for this wonderful conversation. It was a great conversation. And again, guys, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon for more updates. And yeah, thank you so much, guys, from here on the Reverse Scoop channel. This is Nabil Khan and Ajit Bhaskar signing off from the Reverse Scoop. Thank you so much and have a good night, everybody.